and get pollinated, Wild Pack. It's Bernadette, and I'm here with your Pick a Card Tarot reading for Saturday, June 15th, 2021. Strap in for the ride. That's all I can tell you. Get ready, because we're fixing to take the flight together. It's craziness going right up on in here this morning. But look who showed up for y'all today as Spirit Totem and Power Animals. Y'all, like I am sitting in the villages playing rummy, playing poker, doing something. I'm with some, you know, purple hat, or I'm going to tell you the story about this hat and why I'm wearing it, because it means something for your reading today. Um, if my sister's watching, I know you already have tears in your eyes. Um, but it's just crazy, the stuff I was told this morning. It, it was just crazy. So, um... The first of all, let me just say, no joke, this many spirit animals came out for y'all this morning. Here's why. So when I sat down, um, man, I went into a heavy, heavy, deep, not heavy negative, but just like deep meditation this morning before, um, you know, before pulling what I thought was going to be one card for the morning. And, um, you know, when I do this meditation, I always hold the cards either in my hands or close to my chest or, you know, I just kind of, I, I kind of embrace them in some way. And I just give all the spirit animals a big hug. And, um, ooh, I didn't think I was going to get triggered emotionally with this. But <clears throat> I was shown my mom riding on. She was so proud when she could afford this finally. She saved for three years. Three years, y'all. She saved to be able to, to get a riding lawnmower. Because she, you, you can't know what she did to be able to buy uh, 13 acres in country and farm, you know, land no one else wanted. That's why it was so cheap, but dang it, she wanted it. And, um, and when my dad left and just refused to pay on anything, she had to get like 15 jobs and, you know, whole nine yards anyway. So she had always kept this hat as a treasure because a friend of hers in Miami, who was very wealthy, um, went to the Bahamas every year and always brought my mom and grandma gifts from the Bahamas. And my mom always said, I was like, mom, why don't you ever wear that? And she was like, well, uh, you know, to me, it's a memento um, to remind me that one day I'll be able to afford to go to the Bahamas, which she never did. But so one day she decided it's hot as hell on this tractor, little riding lawnmower. And, um, you know, imagine having to mow four acres uh, just in the front of your property. And that's, you know, that's all she could mow. But imagine mowing four acres during the summer. And back then it actually used to rain in Florida. Um, and so, uh, anyway, she had to mow a lot. So she would put on her little, you know, tank top and she would put this on and she used to say that it would help. Oh, she used to say it would help her dream of times that, you know, were, were, um, beautiful and she could afford to do this and do that. It was her thinking hat. She would say, she said, cause I always do my best thinking when I'm mowing the lawn. Okay. I do my best thinking when someone else is mowing my lawn. <laughs> I'm not a lawn person. But um, so anyway, so I've always kept this hat. Ooh, sorry, y'all. I've always kept this hat in memory of my mom. So when that came up, I was like, well, that's a weird message. And then all I could see were flowers everywhere. Flowers, flowers, flowers. Now, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a picture of my backyard for next week because y'all, I am. I grew up in the country, but I'm an animal person. I'm not a farmer. I know the stuff. I mean, mostly I, I could survive during the zombie apocalypse and I'm pretty sure I could save you too. I mean, certainly with what my sister and I know together about animals and farming and my, anyway, where I'm going with all this is this. I just kept seeing flowers everywhere. And then I saw like a whole bunch of different animals pollinating these flowers. And with what, I, with what I'm going through, trying to get flowers to grow here where I live in Gainesville, Florida, it's wet where I live. There's a, there's a, um, a protected wetland behind me. So it's wetter than wet. And, um, and so I was told to wear this, uh, my mom's hat this morning to, to be my thinking hat. So that when I read for y'all, uh, it really comes through very clearly. And here's what I was told. I was like, why am I being, am I supposed to tell them to garden? Am I supposed to know? It's all about the pollinators. I said, okay, well, I know this insect and this insect. And like, I knew hummingbirds pollinated. I knew bats pollinated, but that led me to researching y'all. There are more pollinators in this world than you think. And do you know that 80% of the food you eat would not happen if it weren't for the pollinators in this world? 75% y'all. That means that one, one out of every three things you eat has got to be pollinated. 
So I went and I looked up as many animals as I could in the ark that are pollinators, and here they are. And I was told that every single one of them today is a pollinator for you, even, even the ones that might creep you out, like the Cecropia moth, which is the death card in my deck. Okay. But death is not a terrible card, um, and a lot of cultures associate moths with death, um, and so that's why the moth wanted to be the death card. But, you know, other cultures don't, and without going down a rabbit hole, because today is not about the death card, and it is not about just the Cecropia moth, it's about bees. It's about fireflies. It's about dragonflies. It's about crickets. And by the way, before you write me and say crickets and grasshoppers are not pollinators, uh, you should read up on the new research that says otherwise. Because um, I even looked up praying mantis, and I won't go down the rabbit hole of praying mantis um, being a, a protector of the, of the um, even though they do eat pollinators, they also eat stuff that, that will prey on the, anyway, they're the protectors. They are, they're the guards. We know the moth. Butterflies, of course, scarabs, beetles, big, big, big pollinators. And for those of you that resonate with Egypt and those of you that resonate with the Ten of Wands, such a great card. Um, there you go. Ladybugs, connect the dots, good fortune. And flies, can't get away from them, can't stand them. I grew up here in Florida. Deer flies and horse flies will light you up like somebody is pinging you with a cattle, rod, cattle prod. They hurt y'all. They're no joke. They'll leave. They're terrible. Hummingbird, bat. Okay, so here's what the story is. Pick a pollinator, any pollinator. And that is your animal for today, maybe. But I was told it's actually not about that. What it's about is you getting that you're pollinated by many pollinators. What that means is this. Nobody likes flies. I don't. I want to love them because they're part of the world we live in. And I know that they serve a purpose bigger than what we know. And they are living things. So I do honor them. And I, I will not, I go buck wild when somebody comes into my house and they, first of all, I never, almost never have flies in my house because I have five cats, but flies almost never get into my house and roaches either. I just don't have that problem. But on the rare occasion I do, and somebody's like going to squash it, I'm like, no, ah! they're like, ah! you know, I'm like, don't do that. Not in my house. We don't do that. I, you know, I'll chase that fly for half an hour trying to capture them in a mason jar or a Tupperware or something and try to tote them outside and bless them to be gone. Ants, roaches, I do spiders, definitely. So all that. So all that being said, this, this is not, this is not, this reading is not the average. It takes a village. This is not the average. You are the sum total of all of your experiences. It is not that. It is that you, you're being pollinated. You're, you're being pollinated right at this moment in your life to become the most beautiful flower that you can become. And I was like, to the, to the animal spirit guides, well, really I was talking to bear this morning because when I get super confused, I just curl up in my bear and I'm like, okay, I, I'm not getting it. Can you just tell me? And mama bear turned around to me because I have a mama bear. I know mom, I'm mama bear to a lot of y'all, which is such a, it's such an honor. Thank you guys so much. Um, I turned around to my mama bear and I'm like, I don't get it. What's going on? And what I was, I was like, what does my mom have to do with it in her flower hat? Um, and the Bahamas and the tractor and the mowing the lawn and the this and the that. And what I was shown was because you've, you've, you've got to go back home. And what that means is the real you, who you are, is your home. All these masks and all these things that we do out in the world, they're not really who we are, not at your core, not at your soul. They're not. But you're being pollinated at this moment. Like if you've noticed that you're having an unusually high incidence of, ins of being inspired, if you're having an unusually high incidence of learning things, very like lots of things are coming at you. I got to learn. I got to learn. I got to learn. I got to grow. I got to grow. I'm growing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Or the opposite, you're having more kerfuffles than usual. Like last week, it was kerfuffle week at my Ponderosa. 
Now I try to avoid that Mishigosh. I I had I had too much drama earlier in my life. Completely, complete, not all of it, but yeah, it was. I mean, you're responsible for everything that happens to you, around you, whatever, right? I had way too much drama earlier in my life because I was hard headed, triple Scorpio, and I was just hard headed. I just I can't stand it anymore. I I just you know I exit stage right when there's drama unless I got to stand up and take care of it. And I'm not telling you should be like me. What I'm telling you is. I had to sit and figure out what on God's green earth am I having all these incident after incident after incident. I was just exhausted about last night, y'all. Exhausted. And I know that what's happening is, because I was told this morning I'm being groomed, I'm being pollinated by many different, many different forces, energies, allies, whatever, to take a next step that is going to put me in a place where I have to blossom and bloom like I never have before. I had to sit with that for a couple minutes. Yes, I did. And again, this reading is not about me. It's about you. And it's about going home. Because what I know is, when Mama Bear told me this morning, for y'all and for me, it is more time, it, it is... The, the time in your life, in this life, in this dimension, in this reality, for you to blossom and bloom is more important than maybe any other time in your life. I don't care if you had a baby for the first time. I don't care if you were whatever you did for the first, you got married, you got this, you got your doctorate, you just were able to get out of bed. Maybe you could, uh, I have a client who just is learning to walk again. They were all horrible car accident. Um, and they're learning to walk again. I don't know what's coming for you. And it may only be about how you just show up in the world on an everyday basis. That's that. What else is more important, honestly, but you're being, you're being pollinated from a lot of outside sources. So even if it's a source like a black fly or a mosquito, cause mosquitoes are pollinators. Y'all I live in front of a protected wetland. Believe me, I know about Florida mosquitoes. Believe me. Um, orange peel, by the way. I just rub myself all over with orange peel. And I even sometimes, if somebody ever came in my backyard when I was trying to get my backyard put together like I'm trying to get to put it getting out of there now, and I got safety pinned orange peels all over me. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know what they would think, but I do. So um, please pay attention. And please allow yourself to be pollinated. And what that means is don't, don't, don't judge, don't reject, don't analyze. Just, just maybe keep, um, maybe keep a diary or a journal just for the next month, week to a month. I don't know. Let me just say what I'm hearing. A week to three weeks. I don't know what this is. I'm just going to say a week to three weeks, not even a month. I'm outside, way outside a month, but a week to three weeks. Any experiences that you have, any dawnings of realization, any aha moments, any gosh dang it moments, any sad moments, any anything that triggers you in any way, write it down. Where did it come from? How did you feel? What did you observe? What have you learned from this? Or what do you think you're supposed to learn from this? And I'm telling you now, you're going to be able to, you're going to be the ladybug. You're going to be able to connect the dots because something, something, something is going on. And there's a bunch going on behind the scenes with my book and my deck, uh, a bunch. I just can't say anything about it yet. And it may not come to fruition. Okay, if it does. Okay, if it doesn't. But even if this isn't this one thing that happens, I know that that it is going to happen within the next year, probably sooner, maybe three months. So I really hope that's helpful. And... I really hope that today you put on your own hat that reminds you to stay in touch with your dreams, that your dreams are being pollinated and that things you don't even know you want and aren't even going to achieve yet are being pollinated from a lot of outside sources who love you very much, even the flies and mosquitoes. So again, I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, pick up a copy of the Arc Animal Chair and Oracle deck, get on over to gatheringandmystics.com. But as always, what is most important for you to do good for animals, including yourself, and stay wild. <laughs>